Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 259. Please come to it, page number 259 and today is our lesson number 365. These problems that you see there on page number 259 are the exact same problems that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We already solved all the math problems from this book. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions to these problems on day number 162, 163 and 164. Let's take a look at it. The very first problem deals with the concept of parallel lines. Parallel lines. So here we have two parallel lines. Here we have two parallel lines that we are told is being intersected by a third line. Let me change this marker. This marker is all dead. We have two parallel lines that is intersected by a third line. Now listen, if you are one of those people who usually has trouble figuring out which angle is equal to which angle, especially when you have two parallel lines in, being intersected not just by one line, but two parallel lines that are being intersected by two lines. Now the things get even more complicated. If you find out that you, if you find out that you're confused uh, in, in situations like, like these sometimes, I would like you to pause this video and I want you to watch this, these two videos. You just type in geometry for GRE Geometry for GRE Day 8 and Geometry for GRE Day 11 and watch those two videos before you continue with this particular video. I'm not going to repeat everything that we learned on those two days. We're just going to continue doing the problem here. So here we have two parallel lines, line 1 and line 2 and it's being intersected by a third line. We are told that this angle right here is 57. This angle right here we are told is 57. And what we find is that if this is 57, then this must also be 57. This x will also have to be 57. In other words, in other words, these two angles are equal to each other. This is 57, we are told. This is x, therefore x is 57. So that takes care of x. We are done with the x part. Let's move on then. Now we know, we are told that this angle is y. This angle we are told is y. But if that angle is y, and a straight line makes 180, so the remainder must be 180 minus y. The remainder must be 180 minus y. 180 minus y. What are we going to do with it? I don't know. Oh, and now listen. Now, now we have two parallel lines here, and here's the third line right here. This line right here. And we are told that this is 42. This angle is 42. This angle right here is 42. And this angle we just found out is 180 minus y. There we go, we're done. These two angles are also equal. Therefore, 42 equals 180 minus y. 42 equals 180 minus y. Bring the y to that side, bring 42 to that side. So y equals 180 minus 42. We know 180 minus 40 is 140. Therefore, 180 minus 42 should be 138. Very good, that's our y. y is equal to 138. That's it, we're done. y is equal to 138. Is that all they're asking? Find the values of x and y, we just did that. x is equal to 40, x we just found out was 57, and y we just found out is 138. Let's move on to the second problem, shall we? In the second problem, here's the picture that is given to us. I'm going to reproduce it here as best as I can. So here we have AB. Here we have BC. There is your B. This is Y we are told. This is C. We are told that this angle is X. There is A. 
And what else are we told? And we are told that this is 125. Now, listen carefully. First, what we're going to do? We're going to play. We're going to have a little fun with this problem. Even though this is this is a straightforward, open-ended question here, we're going to convert this question into a comparative computation. Why am I drawing a blank here? What do we call this kind of a comparative comparison? No, no, no. Quantitative comparison. The hell. Let's convert this question into a quantitative Let's convert this question into a com uh, quantitative comparison question So here is a picture that is given to us We are also told We are also told that AC equals BC We are told that And here is our column A And here is our column B In column A we have X plus Y And in column A we have 180 what I want you to do is pause this video and try to solve this problem yourself if you can. So here is a picture that is given between the two columns. We have also told that AC equals BC and here are the quantities. But the very first thing we have to understand is that, so very carefully, the very first thing we have to understand is that, and this is something of course, this is something of course we already know, because we have come across this thing many a times, uh, is that all the pictures that you see on the JRE or pictures on the JRE are not drawn to scale. Pictures are not drawn to scale. We cannot just look at the pictures and simply assume that if two lines look equal to each other, they are equal to each other. As you can see clearly here, BC to me looks shorter than AC. AC looks longer. But we are told that AC is equal to BC. So the very first thing to do in a situation like this is to take a few extra seconds and redraw this, re redraw this picture, not based on what is, what is being shown, but based on what is what we are being told. We are being told that AC equals to BC. So let's reproduce our own triangle there. Based on what, are, what we are being what we are being told. Here is our new picture here. Let's put C, uh, C over here. So C is here and that's X. So X is going to go here. Let's put A over here. And this is 125, that 125 is going to remain here. And B is right there. This is this is what they're calling B. And this is what they're calling angle Y. Let's get going. Watch what happens. First thing we're going to do is to give give to give these two angles names so that we can talk about them. Let's call this angle 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 A with small a and then let's call this one angle B. Well, angle A is very straightforward to find out because it's a straight line, so 125 plus A has to equal 180. That was the easy part. We need the room, obviously, so we need to raise the thing. That's it. We are done with this picture. We, we no longer this, need this picture. Not only that we no longer need it, but it is actually the bloody thing actually is a dis distraction because it's not actually showing the right thing. A C equals C. This is a distraction. Let's get rid of it. So we know that 125 plus A has to equal 180. 125 plus A has to equal 180. Therefore, angle A must equal 180 minus 125. We know that 180 minus 120 would have been 60. Therefore, 180 minus 125 must be 55. There you go. Angle A is equal to 55. That was easy. Now, now, We also know that AC is equal to BC. AC is equal to BC. In other words, in other words, triangle ABC is an how do you spell isosceles? Isosceles is an isosceles triangle. Well, if angle if if if, if a, B, C is an isosceles triangle where A, C is equal to B, C, then angle A has to equal angle B. Angle A has to equal angle B. This tells us, this implies that angle A has to equal angle B. Now we already know that angle A equals 55. If angle A equals 55, then angle B must also equal 55. So that was the easy part. B equals also 55. But we are not interested in B, we are interested in Y. But if B equals 55, then this is the opposite angle which is also 55 which means 55 plus y must equal 180. 
55. If this angle is 55, then the opposite angle is also 55. We are interested in y. y plus 55 equals 180. So we can solve for y. Let's put it on the top here. So from here we know y plus 55, angle y plus 55 has to equal 180. Therefore, therefore angle y has to equal 180 minus 55. We know 180 minus 60 is 120. Therefore, 180 minus 55 must be 180 minus 60 would have been 120, so it's going to be 125. So there is your y. y equals 125. y equals 125. What else do we know? We need to find out the x. We want to find out, we found out the x, y, we found out the y, y equals 125. Now we have to figure out x. x is very simple. X is very simple because angle A plus angle B plus X is to equal 180 because it's a triangle. So let's do this separately here. Now, to find, to find X, we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle X has to equal 180. A and B we know are 55 each. So angle X has to equal 180 minus angle A minus angle B, which is simply 180 minus 2 times 55. 2 times 55 is 110. So 180 minus 2 times 55, 110. 180 minus 110 is 70. And that's your angle X. Angle X equals 70. That's it, we're done. We're done. Now we can solve our problem. Our problem that was given to us was it was a quantitative comparison question. There was a column A, there's our column B, and we are asked to compare x plus y versus 180. x we know now is 70, y we know is 125. 120 plus 70 would have been 190. This is already more than 180. This 195 is more. This 120 is 195 is more than 180. The answer is A. Answer the problem is A. Let's move on then, shall we? Let's do number three. That's it, we are done with this thing. I'm looking for my cup of tea, I left it upstairs by mistake. So I'm going to withdraw from it right now. Alright, that was it, number three. Number three is something that we did on day number 164. And number three deals with an entirely different concept. It deals with something called exterior angle. And here is what's given to us. The picture that is given to us for, for number three is the question is this. The question is number three. Question is, what's the relationship between x, y, and z? Here is our x, here is our y, and z is this guy right here. Now z, notice, notice z it's not sitting inside, Z is sitting outside. Since it's outside, that's why it's called the exterior angle. It's called the exterior angle because it lies outside. Now, if this is Z, then this leftover part has to be 180 minus Z. Let's make a note of it. This has to be 180 minus Z. Now, what do we know about the sum of the angles in a triangle? The sum of the angles in a triangle has to be 180 which means x plus y plus 180 minus z has to equal 180. We know now that x plus y plus 180 minus z has to equal 180. 180 minus z. We notice that 180 appears on both sides of the equation. So if you were to subtract 180 from both sides of the equation, we can knock out 180. We find out that x plus y equals z. One. This 
is one of the most fundamental properties of any triangle. This is one of the most fundamental properties of any triangle. I was going to say of a triangle, of a triangle, the emphasis being on the fact that it does not need to be any particular type of triangle. It doesn't need to be an isosceles triangle or an equilateral triangle or an acute triangle or an obtuse triangle. It does not need to be any particular kind of triangle. In any triangle, this will always be true. What we're going to do now, what we have to do now is to articulate this equation in words. This is written in the equation form. Let's articulate it in words, shall we? Let's do it on the top here. So that's the question. The question is what's the relationship between x, y and z? We just, found, we just told them that the relationship between x, y and z is that the sum of x and y equals z. Let's articulate this thing in words, shall we? What this says actually, what this says is that z, remember, is the exterior angle. So what this says is that in any triangle, in any triangle an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. One more time, what it says is that in in any triangle, it doesn't need to be any particular type of triangle, this is just a triangle, any old ordinary triangle. In any triangle, an exterior angle, this is the exterior angle, is equal to is equal to the sum, S U M sum, sum of the two opposite, the opposite interior angle to ZR, the sum of the two opposite interior angles. You see these are the two opposite interior angles, X and Y. This is also an interior angle, 180 minus Z is also the interior angle, but it is not opposite to Z. The two angles that are opposite to Z are X and Y. So the sum of the two opposite interior angle in any given triangle must equal the exterior angle. That's what this is. This is one of the most fundamental properties, as we just said, of any triangle. We must know that. For the angle, for the, we must know it for the exam. This, this concept appears on the GRE on a regular basis. And you have to know this by heart, like that, on your fingertips. All right? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.